Welcome, dear friends, to our time of devotional reflection for Friday, November the 10th, 2023. I'm Brian J. Monroe, pastor of, Kit- of Kitimat First Baptist Church in beautiful Kitimat, British Columbia. And I've been f- reading um, John F. MacArthur Jr.'s excellent devotional book, Drawing Near, Daily Readings for a Deeper Faith. And today's entry is entitled, Walking with God. I read the following from scripture. Enoch walked with God. Genesis chapter 5, verse 24. The main thought today is that walking with God includes reconciliation, obedience from the heart, and ongoing faith. Pastor MacArthur writes, When scripture speaks of walking with God, it's referring to one's manner of life. Uh, For example, Paul prayed that the Colossian believers, and us, would be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so they could walk, that is, live, in a manner worthy of the Lord. You can read that in the letter to the Colossians, chapter 1, verses 9 through 10. To the Ephesians, Paul wrote, Walk no longer, just as the Gentiles also walk, in the futility of their minds, But be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love just as Christ also loved you. Again, read the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 17, and chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. The Old Testament describes Enoch as a man who walked with God. Though relatively little is said about this special man, we can derive implications from his life that will help us better understand what it means to walk with God. First, Enoch's walk with God implies reconciliation. Amos chapter 3 verse 3 says, Do two walk together unless they have agreed to do so? That's from the New International Version translation. It's very similar to the one I just read for scripture today. Two people can't have intimate fellowship unless they agree. Obviously, Enoch wasn't rebellious toward God, but he had been re- but he had been reconciled with him through faith. Second, walking with God implies loving service. Second John chapter 6 says, "This is love, that we walk according to his commandments. We obey Christ, but our obedience is motivated by love, not by legalism or fear of punishment. Third, a godly walk implies continuing faith, for we walk by faith, not by sight, as Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. And in Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 and 7, Paul adds, As you therefore have received Christ Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, having been firmly rooted and now being built up in him and established in your faith. By grace, Enoch believed God and pleased him all his life. Do Do those who know you best see you as one who walks with God? Oh, there's a good question. I pray so. And Pastor MacArthur trusts so. After all, that's the distinguishing mark of a true believer. The one who says he abides in him ought himself to walk in the same manner as he walked. 1 John chapter 2, verse 6. Dear friends, I commend you for having taken just a few minutes out of your day to listen to this devotional reflection as written by John MacArthur. And it is my honor and my privilege to read it for you. Now, I've taken Pastor MacArthur's suggestions for prayer and for further study that are attached to this, and I've placed them in the description portion of the video. That's so you can read them, interact with them, and glean the benefit of that additional time in prayer and study and I pray you will do that. Until we can be together again, as always, I pray it will be tomorrow to hear the next uh, installment, the next chapter from Pastor MacArthur's book. May you go in the grace and the peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 